Hello, everyone, and welcome to SoftServe monthly webinar series. I'm very happy to have all of you here joining us. If you might have any issues with the sound quality, please do not hesitate to drop us a line in live chat or to the webinar email address. Also, if you have any questions to the related topic, please feel free to email them on webinar at softserveinc.com and we'll be happy to answer them at the end of the webinar. And today we are excited to talk about big data and how to design for it in a fun and entertaining way. And here with us today we have Dr. Rick Kasman, Dr. Umberto Cervantes, Serge Hazif, and Olga Gretzai. And it would be nice if you introduce and tell a couple of words about yourself, guys. Hi, thank you. Uh, so uh, my name is Rick Kaysman. I'm a, uh, a professor at the University of Hawaii and uh, also principal researcher at the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, Berto, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello, my name is Umberto Cervantes. I'm a, I'm a professor at the uh, university, one leading university in Mexico City. Uh, I do research around the topic of software architecture, and I also do consulting with uh, software companies. Hello, my name is Serge Hazif. I'm a VP of uh, software architecture at SoftSurf. And uh, big data is uh, one of our uh, major directions, uh, uh, especially in uh, uh, big data consultancy and uh, implementation of um, big data projects for uh, large enterprises and ISV companies. And hello, my name is Ola Hritsai. I work at Softers as Big Data and BI uh, architect and consultant, and also I'm leading in Big Data direction at Softer. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, why we created the game, uh, the motivation, and then um, I'll turn it over to Umberto, who will then talk about the game rules. So in terms of the game motivation, the reason that we created a game was that we have been uh, working with developing and applying the ADD attribute driven design method, which is a well known method for uh, designing software architectures. And we've been working on this method for more than a decade. And we realized that it was difficult to, to teach the method and to give people experience. And so we decided to create a game wherein you as architects or as wannabe architects can get some experience in competing with other architects, um, or you can do this in teams, to actually do architectural design to make decisions. And uh, as you'll see, the game is scored so that you need to do a better job that than your competitors, and this is all part of the learning process. You can see that <clears throat> here we've prototyped this game on a number of different occasions in both private uh, industry internal and public events, such as uh, the most recent Saturn, which was in Baltimore this past April at the SCI ACE Educators Workshop, Soft Serves Architecture Gathering, and several other events. So what we do um, in the game is we have, uh, like, like any other board game that you, you would play, like Monopoly, there's a set of game cards. So we actually have playing cards that you can, you can download and print. There's a game scenario, which we will be describing uh, shortly. Uh, and in this case, the, the, the scenario surrounds big data. There's a game board, so you know where you are on the board and, and uh, how close you are to the finish line. There are dice, which are not downloadable. You have to supply your own and markers as well to keep track of your position. And finally, a scorecard, because the score gives you some feedback as to how well you're doing and how well you're, you're learning the process of architecture design. So... I will very, very briefly introduce the ADD method. This is, of course, a, a, a subject that we teach at, at great length over several days, so don't expect to learn it all in, uh, in this brief 
few words, but very briefly, ADD begins with uh, you collecting a set of inputs to the method. So your objectives for design, the concerns and constraints that you're trying to address and manage, and your primary functional requirements and quality attributes. And you start off by reviewing the inputs and ensuring that they're complete or as complete as they can be and as correct as they can be. And you establish an iteration goal for each iteration. The method is an iterative method by selecting some of those drivers from your inputs, the, the most important outstanding driver. And then you choose a part of the architecture, one or more elements to refine in the, uh, in the design process. You choose uh, a design concept or several design concepts that satisfy the drivers that you've selected. And I'll talk about how you choose those momentarily. Then you instantiate the architectural elements and allocate responsibilities and define interfaces between the parts that you've instantiated. And then you do a little bit of lightweight documentation. You sketch some views, you record the decisions that you've made and you analyze what you've done. You ask yourself some questions to figure out whether you have more work to do or not. So to help you make the design decisions, we have created a number of what we call uh, design concepts where we have cataloged these in a design concepts catalog. And the design concepts catalog uh, is represented in the game playing cards. So you can see this is a catalog for big data analytics and their reference architectures, their data storage technologies, integration technologies, and so forth. So if you look to the right at the data storage technologies, you'll see there are distributed file systems, data warehouses, NoSQL databases. And within the NoSQL databases category, there are there's a, a family of NoSQL databases that are document oriented. And you can see one, the, the card for the family. Um, uh, at the, the bottom left, and then a specific instance of the documented, document-oriented family is MongoDB. Uh, so that's a specific technology, and each technology family, each technology comes with a set of ratings from one to three stars that tell you how well this uh, technology performs with respect to a, a number of different quality attributes and concerns. Now I'm going to turn it over to Umberto, who will go over the game rules. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Rick. So uh, I will talk now about the game rules. And as Rick said, and the first thing I want to mention is that this game can be both played by a group of individuals who are competing against each other, or by uh, uh, groups of, of, of teams who are competing against each other. So in the first case. The, individu the individuals need the game board, and in the second case, it's not completely necessary. So the game also, uh, the, the way the game is played, it simulates the execution of the ADD steps through several iterations. So currently we have five iterations, and the game also is, uh, it requires a facilitator who's gonna be guiding at least the first iteration. So as Rick mentioned previously, the first step of ADD before uh, starting the actual iteration process involves reviewing the inputs to the design, design process. So here the facilitator is going to present the, the game scenario. And the game scenario, uh, in this case, this is a big data system, uh, is, is presented as a set of functional requirements, quality attributes, and constraints. So I won't really go into the details of this game scenario because it is going to be presented uh, later on. So once the game scenario is explained, the actual uh, game iterations uh, begin. So for each one of these iterations, the game is going to provide information that is the equivalent of what would be obtained in steps two and three of ADD, meaning the iteration goal and a selection of, of drivers, which is a subset of all the, of the initial drivers, and also an element that uh, the architects need to be re to refine. So at the beginning of the game and when using the game board, the, the players can now place the markers in the first position of the board. And uh, here is an example of the information that is provided by the game in each of the iterations. So as you can see here, there is the goal, the specific goal, a subset of the drivers that are 
the one that the, the players need to address for this iteration and, and the element that they need to, to refine. So the next step is the, is the core of the game, and this corresponds to step four of ADD, where the architect needs to select uh, design one or more design concepts in order to satisfy the drivers that are uh, selected for the particular iteration. So as uh, Rick previously mentioned here, what, we, what the architects need to select is uh, design concepts. And we have two types of, of two broad categories of design concepts pattern design concepts and technology design concepts. So the patterns include here reference architectures and technology, fa technology families, and the specific technologies are the other categories. So the selection of the design concepts involves uh, going through uh, the cards, the, the, the catalog of design concepts is presented as this set of cards, and the, the, the cards are, the, the back of the cards separates the ones that are pattern oriented and the, the, the technologies. And each one of the cards, as you can see here on the left, presents the details of a specific design concept. So the information that is provided includes the name and the type of design concept, and also a brief description and a diagram. However, the most important information that the players need to review is what's on the bottom of the card, and it's the influence and drivers. So for each one of the design concepts, there will be a list of design concepts and each one uh, of uh, drivers, sorry. And for each one of these drivers, there will be a rating in terms of stars. One star means that this particular design concept doesn't have an influence on the particular driver. So it means that it doesn't help you solve that particular driver. While three stars means that it's very good in order to help you solve that particular driver. So uh, in, at the beginning of an iteration, the game also provides some guidance with respect to the type of design concept that the, the, the players need to, uh, to select, and it provides a list of alternatives. This is to speed up a little bit the execution of the game so that the players don't need to go through all the cards in each one of the iterations. So here, for example, for this first iteration, the players need to select the reference architecture, and there's four alternatives. So here, at this point in the game, is where the players need to take their time and analyze the information of, uh, on the cards and hopefully make a smart decision. So once they have made their decision, the players have the, to fill the information on, on the scorecard. And the first information that they're going to be filling is the design concept that they have chosen. So this represents the fact that during the, the design process, the architects are supposed to, to uh, record their design decisions. The second information that the players are going to fill is what we call the driver selection for points. And this is a total of the number of points that correspond to the drivers that are selected for the iteration. The next steps of, uh, of the game involve steps five and six of ADD. And uh, steps five and six uh, represent instantiating the design concepts and sketching and initial uh, views for, for uh, the, the, the design. So play, having these uh, activities played in the game would be too complicated, so we decided to simulate the, the execution of these activities through the throw of dice. So players are going to be throwing dice, and uh, depending on the result, they may, they may get uh, bonuses or penalties. So a bonus will uh, represent the fact that the players did a good job in instantiating the design concepts, and a penalty would represent the fact that the players did a bad job on, on, uh, represent, on instantiating these design concepts, or maybe that there was some unexpected event that influenced positively or negatively the outcome of the, of the design iteration. So the last step of ADD involves analyzing uh, the, the decisions that were made during the iteration and also reviewing if other iterations are uh, needed in the rest of the design process. So the way this analysis is performed is also with information that is provided with the game. So the game provides tables with the lists of alternatives. And again, there are some bonuses and penalties according to uh, the, 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 the uh, design concept that is selected. 
So the first analysis is performed by the facilitator at the end of the first iteration, and the analysis for the remaining iterations is performed at the end of uh, the, the, the game. So once the analysis is performed, the players have to fill in the, 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 the last uh, row, the row D, where they are filling the analysis bonus point, and now they can calculate the total for the iteration. And this same process is repeated across the, across the remaining of the iterations for the game. And at the end, the players calculate the final score, and the highest score is the one that helps select who is the winner for the game. Finally, I want to mention that at the end of the game, a discussion is promoted by the facilitator so that the players can uh, review and exchange information. Thank you. Thank you, Umberto. And uh, the next section is uh, game scenario. So let me and Ola introduce it. This uh, game scenario was created specifically uh, for big data technology domain, uh, and it is based on real-life project requirements. The target big data system involves the collection and analysis of uh, massive logs that are coming in real time from uh, hundreds of uh, servers. Nowadays, uh, many IT companies face uh, the demand uh, to analyze and structure it and uh, semi-structure it data to provide uh, either better services uh, or to be competitive uh, at the market. Uh, let's see four major use cases for this solution. Uh, the first one is to monitor online services by uh, on-duty staff through real-time operational dashboard to react on detected issues as soon as possible. The second one is to troubleshoot online service issues and do actual root cause analysis by searching important system messages. The third one is to provide management reports to see historical information, for example, SLA violations, uh, features usage, quality of releases, and so on and so on. And uh, the last but not least is to provide ad hoc data analytics for data scientists to find out specific data patterns and correlations to improve customer satisfaction. Here you may see these um, uh, use cases mapped to this architecture diagram. And uh, we assume in this game scenario that an architect has already collected architecture significant requirements such as uh, quality attributes and uh, constraints like performance, scalability, cost, and uh, others. To simplify the game, these requirements are divided between game iterations. So in a particular iteration, you just need to analyze only corresponding requirements. As Umberto selected Lambda architecture as a first design decision, let me continue with a short overview of um, uh, its major elements. The Lambda architecture splits the processing of a data stream into two lanes, one called the speed layer, which supports access to real-time data, and the other that supports access to historical data and consists of uh, batch and uh, servant layers. The batch layer contains the uh, master dataset element that keeps immutable raw data. Also, the batch layer pre-computes information that will be used by the uh, servant layer and batch views specifically. The uh, servant layer contains pre-calculated and aggregated views optimized uh, for querying uh, with uh, low latency. Uh, which is, uh, by the way, often required by uh, modern reporting solutions, such as uh, Tableau or MicroStrategy, Pentaho. Um, the speed layer uh, processes and provides access to recent data through real-time views, uh, which are not available. Uh, the data may not be available in the servant layer due to high latency of uh, batch processing. So actually, speed layer compensates uh, this fact. For more details about Lambda architecture, please follow the link, uh, lambda-architecture.net. 
And here is a mapping of uh, game iterations to the uh, system elements. Basically, the first iteration is a selection of a reference architecture, uh, Lambda architecture in our case. The second iteration is refinement of the data stream element. Under refinement, we mean selection of a technology family and a certain technology from uh, playing cards. Uh, then the game continues with refinement of uh, master data set in the sort iteration, batch views in fourth, and finishing with real-time views in fifth iteration. As you may notice, we didn't add uh, design iterations for pre-computing and uh, query and reporting elements uh, just for the sake of simplicity. And let me switch to Ola. Okay, thank you, Serge. So let's go to the second iteration in our game. So during this iteration, the refinement of data stream element, so this is the first element in the reference architecture, need to be performed. Uh, in particular, um, a player or a team uh, need to select two cards. So the first card uh, is this a technology family, like a pattern card, and uh, the second one this is the exact technology to implement this element. Uh, so you can see on the slide that uh, there are actually two technology alternatives for data stream element. Uh, from the left side, the data collector pattern has multiple candidate technologies such as Apache Flume, FluentD, or Logstash. And the second option, this is distributed message broker with candidate technologies like Apache Kafka, RabbitMQ, Apache ActiveMQ, or Amazon SQS. And while making uh, the decision, so several architecture drivers need to be taken into account, uh, such as performance, uh, compatibility, and reliability. As Serge mentioned previously, so we have already mapped uh, what architecture drivers should be addressed and should be considered on what iteration. So that's actually a hint for a player and for a team how to make a decision. And uh, after completion of all iterations, we make um, a review of results. And uh, so there are scoring tables for every iteration. So here you can see uh, an example of scoring tables for the second iteration. Uh, to calculate the total score, we evaluate the family card decision and the technology card decision. Uh, score depends um, on how the important um, so score uh, actually can be different uh, depending on how the important architectural driver can be addressed um, by particular technology card or family card. And uh, I would say that there is no single uh, silver bullet, so various combinations uh, of decisions can be successful. Uh, so you can see that the driver points are really very have very similar score. Uh, the game is considered to be completed uh, when uh, players went through all five iterations and uh, when the reference architecture is selected and also we have a combination of cards for each of the system uh, element. So here in the screen there is a sample game result um, with a sample combination of cards and uh, also there is one uh, nice bonus, the team that finished first received plus two points for time to market. And uh, after that, so the, we treat the game as finished one and uh, calculate the total score. So that is was actually all about the game rules and all the iterations. And I think um, that this game is really very interesting to play and good, great. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, now let's have a look into our email box and see whether we have any questions coming in. Okay. Oh, so here we have a um, couple of questions. So the first one, um, can this game be applied for other domains than big data? For example, DevOps, Cloud, or Internet of Things? Uh, let me uh, address this question is very good question by the way and uh, the answer is absolutely the game rules are completely domain agnostic uh, now we are starting devops playing cards and uh, associated uh, game scenario based on uh, 
real life case study. Hope uh, we will finish it uh, early next year. And I would like to emphasize that uh, the game is open for a software community. Feel free to add new domains and new scenarios or uh, change the existing one. We believe that uh, it will help the entire software community improve architecture design skills. Uh, good. Here is another question coming through the live chat. Uh, what type of knowledge do you require to play the game? And can it be played by junior developers? Yes, let, let me uh, answer this question. So um, the game was designed to be played by both students and, and practitioners. So you don't really need to be an architect to play this game or to even uh, be knowledgeable in uh, about ADD or the, the specific domain such as big data. Maybe the only thing they need to understand a little bit is the different type of requirements. But the rest of the game actually illustrates and, and teaches you these, these concepts. So uh, you don't need to have very specific knowledge to, to, to play this game. Good. Um, thank you. So, um, and the last question for today is, um, how long does a game session take? Okay, I'll take this one. Um, so we have played the game in as little as one hour, but we don't really recommend a session that short. I think a healthier time allotment would be something more like two hours or even three hours. Uh, and the, the reason is that in many cases, the most interesting part of the game and the learning occurs in the discussions. So you play the game and then you, you go back and you talk about, well, why did you make this decision? Why did I get a higher score for this? And you got a lower score for that. And that's really where the learning occurs and the maturation as an architect occurs. So we see the game as a starting point for deeper discussions. And to do that, you need to allocate some time. But, but yes, you could, you could play it in an hour over a lunch hour um, and, and get some benefit from it. Great. Thank you, Rick. Um, thank you, Umberto, Serge, and Olga for leading this um, exclusive webinar. Um, and I hope that the ones that join us had an informative and fruitful time with us. Check our schedule and join our next webinars in October and November. Thank you again.